case you're new to the channel, my name is Sean and I'm a house plant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. Thank you for having us here in this beautiful garden. Welcome to Queen Sericate Botanic Garden in Chiang Mai, Thailand. In this episode, we are hosted by a botanical expert, Mr. Pia Kasset, who holds the title Director of Botanical Garden Development. In today's botanical adventure, I asked him to show us unusual and spectacular plants in the garden, including the restricted areas. Okay, this garden is located at the foothill of Doi Sutep Pui, actually 45 minutes to an hour drive from, from Chiang Mai city. And the garden area is about uh, 1,000 hectares, ranking from 650 to 1,200 meters above sea level. We uh, have uh, 12 greenhouses here, and we have our main collection, uh, which are our ginger, orchids, rare and threatened plants, and also the uh, Thai medicinal plants. Actually, we have three main purposes. The first one is uh, trying to uh, conserve the plants, mainly uh, Thai plants, the threatened ones and the rare ones. We have some research on, on the native plants, making some products. And then we also uh, do some research about uh, reintroduction for conservation. And then our, we also have the ed educational purpose. Uh, we open for the uh, school children, uh, for their university children. Uh, they can come and, and learn more about plants. My job in the garden is uh, I look after the the, 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 the garden, the area here uh, in terms of landscape, uh, in terms of plants collection, and in terms of the, the display in the glass houses. And also I, I myself, I'm a researcher, I'm a taxonomist. I work on some genera of ginger, uh, some orchids and uh, rare plants, for example, uh, impatiens. Mr. Pia Kasset recently released a book on the impatiens genus. I can't help but ask, why this genus? Why impatience? Uh, it's quite uh, diverse. And I try to, I, actually I, I, I travel around and I collect some impatience. I, I couldn't find the name. Uh, at that time, we have the, the Japanese botanist, uh, Professor Shimizu. Uh, he uh, worked on, on this group of plants, but after that he uh, passed away and he couldn't finish his, his work. I trying to uh, finish this work. We're trying to search for more species and we found more and more uh, in, in the forest. The, the first report was like uh, 35 species occur in Thailand, but right now uh, in my treatment it's more than 90. This uh, genus is quite diverse in, in Thailand, you know. And this is uh, the, our native uh, medicinal plants, Philodium pusillum. Mm -hmm. Uh, this one you can see it uh, belong to legume family, mm. bean family. You know it has a trifoliate leaf, yeah. one, two, three, three leaves, and and then this the whole thing here, it look like leaf, but actually it's a whole inflorescence. Yeah. Yes. And each inflorescence, here it has the bract. This is the bract, which is look like leaf, mm -hmm. but smaller. The flower is hid hidden, yeah. underneath, mm. inside. And you see the seed pot. Oh, this very pot, cute. It's, it's there also. Very cute pot. Right. Irene sent me some of these seeds and I successfully grown the seeds. Yeah, but this is yeah. very pregnant, very robust with all right, the seeds. Right, right. So maybe this is one of those plants that is easy to share with your friends and family once they have reached. Oh, yeah, see it's here. It's a, a stingless bee coming okay. in. Yeah. Yeah help to pollinate the flowers, the, the small one. The sp Can you share with us the medicinal or known medicinal benefits? Okay, this one, one we use the root, uh, I think boil in the, boil in the water uh, to, uh, as a painkiller. And then we also use the leaves as a, like to, to uh, decrease the, the fever. We use the whole plants also are to uh, help to, how to say, to, to kill your, your bad uh, liver oh. uh, problem. If you have a problem with alcohol and things that make your, your uh, liver getting not really function, so yeah, yeah. You, you have this one to, to help. 
Interesting. But that being said, do not try this at home. Uh, to be only used by professionals that are experienced. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, so don't go chomping on this after three glasses of wine. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> we are in the middle of the rainy season, so many things pops up, pops up from the ground, especially the gingers, you know. Here we have two kinds of uh, globa. The first one here with a purple black, Globa William Sienna. I think it's, it's already known in, in the plant market now from central Thailand. And this is from the Western Thailand, Globa Sherwoodiana, Sherwoodiana. The, the Burmese people, they use this one to, to offer to the monk in, in the temple. That's amazing. Right. Do they bloom often for you? O only in the rainy season. But uh, now uh, we have a good value for uh, cut flowers, you know. If you go now to a uh, world road market in Chiang Mai, you see a lot of this one being sold in, in uh, the cut flower market. So this is staff only. So it's not open to public, right? Yeah, it's not okay. open to public. Yeah. <laughs> this is one of my favorite fern. I name it myself. Adiantum Tong Tammy I, endemic to just one island. Uh, in the Gulf of, of Thailand, in the eastern part. We were in the top of the mountain in that island, exploring many plants there, and I suddenly found this one growing among the rocky, open rocky area. At that time, I wouldn't believe it. Uh, it's a Thai fern because it's quite hairy. It looks like the temperate one. It looks like Australian one. Wow, interesting. And it's very, very beautiful. Is it difficult to grow in your experience? Uh, here, maybe not, but in Bangkok, it's very difficult. Okay, yes. it needs a cooler climate. It needs a cooler, yeah, night. Yeah. We have a very rare terrestrial orchids, which is restricted to Peninsula Thailand, found only in two provinces in Peninsula, uh, Coribas Icarinatus. And then uh, you said that each of these leaves is uh, one flower. Yes, so one leaf, one plant here. So we have many plants here, and you can see the flower pops up in the middle of the, the, the caudate leaf. Look at the, the, the patterns on the leaves. Do the plant die off after the flower is done? Or? Yeah, it has a short uh, dormancy period. Yes. Yeah, and then how does it spread, I guess, uh, it spreads sideways? How does it? Uh, it, it, it has a, a kind of a small rhizome, yeah. and uh, they go a little bit uh, uh, from further from, from the mother plants and then uh, form their small bulb. Yeah. Yes. So I guess two ways to propagate this. One is that they do spread sideways by itself and another way would be by pollination. Right, right, right. By yeah. seeds, of course. Interesting. Is there, do you think this will be taking off any time as a houseplant market or is this a bit more complicated and... Um, and now like, actually in the dark market. In the dark market. <laughs> in, in the, yeah, in the dark market, they are on sale. So one, one leaf, sometimes they sell for uh, more than 1,000 baht. Oh my gosh. Yes, for one plant like wow. that. Wow. So here are our generate collections. Uh, some of them are from Laos. For example, this one. We are waiting for uh, the flowers. And after that, we can identify. But uh, for now, I think it's a, the genus is uh, Parabia, this one, Parabia. This is also an, a new species. I think it will be described as uh, Parabia thailandica, this one. This is from Lui, from, from Lui, not eastern part of Thailand. Okay. Yes. This is the rare begonia from Peninsula Thailand. Mm -hmm. they described it some years ago. You have two forms of this one. This is has red color underneath, mm -hmm. and this one is green. Okay. Not, yeah. It's called Begonia turidiformis because it looks like the ferns. Okay, yeah, yeah indeed. Look like pteridophyte. I think it's, it's still very difficult to keep this one because it has its own tuber mm -hmm. and it's, it's died, uh, died back in the, in the dry season. Oh. And then it's come out again in the rainy season. Yeah. And if you don't know how to keep it, they would die. Some, Sometimes if we uh, keep it too dry, mm. so the, the, the rhizome would uh, dry up and then die. So, so, only... so sometimes sometime you, you need uh, a, a little bit of moisture. And if you keep it too wet in the sleeping season, they would die also. <laughs> wow. So that's the difficult thing to keep uh, their, their seasonal plants like this. Yeah, very difficult task for the caretaker of this uh, greenhouse. 
Right, right, right. But but once when you get used to it, uh, you can apply for many things that that behave like this. So this is one of my uh, new impatient species found in the northern part of Thailand, and it has very nice uh, silvery patterns on the leaves like that. We name it a uh, impatient fasciana, which is mean the pheasants. Pheasants, yes. as in the chicken, like right, a, like a right, poultry. Right, right. <laughs> That's funny. But the colors are intensely beautiful. The lines, it looks like someone hand drew it on there and the right, leaves. Right. My gosh. Is this easy to grow? About 600 meters to 1,300 meters above sea level. Mm. So, so it's, it, it's required, uh, you know, cold night. These are our ant plants, mm -hmm. Mumicodia. Ixora, you know Ixora. No. <laughs> Ixora. <laughs> it's the same family. Our gardenia. You know, gardenia, gardenia, okay. Yeah, yeah the same flowers. family. But yeah. this one growing as uh, if we fight, you know, on, okay. on the tree branch. If we got this one cut, and open it, you will see a lot of uh, hole mm -hmm. inside. Yeah. And this one is a place of, of the ants yeah. that stay in, in this kind of uh, uh, habitats. They have a symbiotic relationship. I'm right, sure. right. They give right. the shelter and then nitrogen from the... Right. And, and, and ants, uh, first one, ants try, uh, help to protect the, the plants. And at the same time, they brought in some organic matters. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like leftover food and also their, their Like poop. some dirt, some pieces of insects or things like that. They brought inside and it, it become their fertilizer of the plants. You can oh, see the, the orange one is a fruit. Yeah, I was going to ask, what is that? That orange? It, and it and it's contain three or four seeds in the, in the, in the fruits. Yeah. And then sometimes the seeds there can germinate. It germinates uh, right, right on the plant. Yeah, right, right away on, on the branch like that. Right on the mama's back. Yes. That's crazy. And then this little yellow things are the flowers. Is that what it is? I see this the, little... The yellow, it's a white, white thing. Yeah, it's here. flower? Yeah, yeah, four, four petals. This is a very, very peculiar plant. Right, right. Very peculiar indeed. And for those people who like cardiciforms, this may be a type of plant. Yes, like. yes, yes. But this is, do you think this is easy to care for? I think it's easy. It's easy, right? It's easy. It's easy. It's like a tropical cardis, uh -huh. cardisiform. And this is a genus Mumicodia, but this is this is different one. You see no spine at all. Oh yeah, and uh, the leaves look is very hit, different. This is Yeah. smaller flower. Uh, mainly in our Papua New Guinea. The hot spots is in Papua New Guinea. Okay. Are they endangered, threatened, or anything? Yeah, some of them because the local people they, they slice their their, their stem mm. and use for cancer. It's quite common in the market uh, of the West Papua yeah. of of Indonesia. If you, if you go to the local market, you see this one uh, slice and dry, mm. dried, and but you can buy it from the local market. It is known to have cancer fighting properties, but again, is the science there, or is this something that people pass? Down? I I think people. Uh, some uh, scientists has already, uh, you know, get this one proof. Okay. They, they contain something. I can't remember yeah, yeah. clearly, but, but yeah, you can go and check from the so uh, interesting. paper. Also, one important question. Let's say if I have this fruit and I have the seeds, is it fast growing? How, how long would it take for it to reach? like a decent size, years, decades? I think, I think for uh, two, three months, you get this size. Oh, that little you see? size. Yeah, that's very slow growing. Uh huh. And then it will get. And then this one maybe uh, like two years, maybe. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Not fast. Not fast. But very beautiful. There's an interest for them in uh, Taiwan and Japan. This one we call it silver fern, but they don't they don't look really silver here. But if you want to see silver thing, you have to. See here in the back. Oh, wow. See? That is really cool. Right. Yeah. It's... Where is it found? Do you know? This occurs in the northern part also. Is it so. difficult to grow in your experience? Um, not so. I don't think so, this one. Yeah. And this is uh, also uh, but different species, also with white color. Oh, yeah. The leaf shape is a little bit different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is funny. It looks like nothing from the top, but you really... Yeah, right. Yeah. You can tell us about this uh, enclosure. This is our limestone plants house, which is not open for public because we got problem with uh, plants stolen at some point. Ooh. So it's our uh, open roof uh, up on the recrease. Okay. Would so you like to... Trying to replicate their uh, limestone habitats. 
yeah. uh, from different part of, of Thailand. And 99% of the plants in this uh, house uh, is from, from Thailand, it's native. Yeah. Except this one. This is this is from uh, northern Vietnam. Okay. Begonia size Maori. There's a lot of begonias coming out yeah, from Vietnam actually. Because their begonias are uh, mainly limestone lover. These are very, very robust, very interesting Hoyas. Yeah, Hoya uh, globulosa. Is it from Thailand? Yeah, from, from the western part of Thailand, also Myanmar. Yeah. This one, globulosa. Very glossy leaves. And very thick and hairy. Yeah. Oh, and the hair is on the underside of the leaves. Yeah, on, on the upper surface, they do too? have hair. Yeah. yeah. But at the same time, glossy. Yeah, it's <laughs> very strange. <laughs> strange indeed. But yeah, I, I feel that more for, the hair is more on the bottom. Is there one that's blooming? Uh, no, 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 unfortunately. Yeah, but it's like literally like strewn over this right. uh, surface here. And then you have some uh, urticaceae here. How do you say this again? Urticaceae, it's a, uh, actually this family uh, we know as the itchy plant, you know. Is it because it itches but, when but you... This, but this, this, this one is not itchy. Okay. <laughs> no, I think, I mean, a lot of people are saying, calling this the Elatostema. Elatostema, this, yes, yes. That's that, that a genus, yes. Oh, okay. The one that I, I told you was uh, the, the family. Yeah, this is actually very beautiful. Urticaceae. And they make very good ground cover, correct? Right, right, right. Yeah. Interesting. And that new leaf is so beautiful, oh my gosh. And they flower beautifully too on the stems. I like it. it uh, oh, you I, like it, okay. I like it because it's like so fast, so interesting. It's on the stems and on each petiole. And also really quickly, can we talk about the Salaginella? Because it is actually something that a lot of people are talking about. You have the green yeah, varieties. This, is, this, this, this is uh, from South America, I think. Mm. It's exotic. It has a red color underneath. Beautiful. This is a rare Eritrina, yeah. Eritrina calcicola. This nice. is the name here. It's restricted to northeastern part of, of Thailand on their uh, limestone yeah. hill. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like the dinosaur footprints here. Yeah. Three lobes. Very cute. Maybe a, a new species. Mm. Yeah, the e e expert said. Uh, it's probably a new species. And then next to it is uh, Biconia simensis. Mm. It's beautiful. Very classic. They look almost like your aroid leaves. Right. That people right. love. Also rare, mm -hmm. uh, Kynia uh, grandifora. The genus Kynia is mainly in Africa. Mm. But I think only one species in, in Asia is this one. Uh, ranging from India, Myanmar, and then Thailand. This Beautiful is... frosty leaves. Right. But from the name suggests, does it have really wonderful flowers, the big flowers? Not so big, but maybe big in, in its genus. Okay. In its genus. Here, this is uh, Impatiens mirabilis, uh, which is from, again, from Peninsula Thailand. And it's, it's, it is the world's largest uh, species in the genus. Mm, and it's flowering profusely. Yeah. Let's see. And it's got this interesting trunk. Right. Is this common or is, do you think this is quite rare? It's common in the southern part of Thailand. Okay. So they bloom one at a time? Yeah, they bloom one at a time in e each branch. And this one keep growing. Yeah. Yeah, it gets longer and produce. Uh, uh, in one branch, I can count it. it it's, sometimes it's, it's, it can be uh, almost 100. So these are like one, two, three. You can right, count right. how many flowering it's right, had. Right, right, right. And you said this can go over how many meters? Uh, About almost two meters. Okay. Yes. Interesting. Very Either fascinating. Wide. Yeah. But the main plant, the main branch, will stay like here. Like yeah. Here. Right. Right. But yeah. this, this again, is will go higher. Uh, higher. How many like, meters like tall? Do you know. And it's actually quite beautiful when you see it. It's like a little dwarf. Right. <laughs> Something from a fairy tale, almost. Smallest uh, species of taka in in Thailand, taka plantaginia. You can see the, the flowers. Very cool. They hide under the leaves. Beautiful. And they are also limestone plants. Yeah, yeah. They love to grow in, in uh, stream side, but need to be a limestone creek. So most of these plants here will not really survive well in our average gardens. Some can, some can survive, I think, yeah. some. But, but here you have an evaporative cooling system, which uh, the plants uh, are more healthy. 
Yeah, and also the right growing medium for them to right, grow right. too. Right, right. Leaves begonia, mm. which is a new record for uh, Thai flora. Begonia silhetensis. You said new record as a new dis- uh, newly described. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's newly found uh, for the countries. Okay. Yes. Glossy leaves too. Used to be only known from China. Okay, but the same uh, known from China, but you found the same species in, in native yeah, in, 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 the, in the northern part of, of Thailand, oh, in Chiang Rai. You see in Patians, pa- Parichiai occur in the western part of Thailand and then Myanmar. Yeah, interesting details on the leaves and, and the flowers. They curated kind of, leaf. Yeah, and then the flowers they kind of dangle down like little fairies. Hello. You can try to touch it. It's quite oh. hard. Oh yeah, very. It's like a reptile. Yeah, like a very dinosaur hard, skin. Right? Yeah. Okay. This 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 one we we call it a uh, uh, mahonia, mahonia oh. berberidaceae. Actually, uh, this family it's it's uh, restricted to the temperate area of Thailand. No, no, or of, of, of the world. Of the world. Of the world. Interesting. They, How is it growing here? Yeah, it's it's in their high mountain in, in northern Thailand. Yeah, it's got very beautiful yeah. peak leaves. That's why it's, the leaf is quite hard because actually it's a hardy, hardy plant. It actually looks really beautiful. From yeah, down below at the bar. Yeah. yeah, stunning and how it's like branching out. Also the gesturiot from, from Peninsula Thailand. I can. Okay. This one occurs also in northern part of Malaysia. Yeah. And it perches like this, naturally. Yes, yes, yes. Correct. Normally, it's grow on the uh, like roof of the cave or in front of the cave. They prefer like like a vertical area. And then like uh, indirect light, but uh, is it low light or is it? It's uh, it has sometimes it has a short di- direct light mm. uh, for one or two hours. Yeah, in the morning. So hence they like stay near the entrance right. of, the, of those caves. This is actually a very, very beautiful. But probably a challenge to grow in pots and in our homes, probably. Yeah, very difficult to keep it in pots. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Bauhinia simensis. Simensis. And it's look, it has a very uh, a strange stipple hmm. on the stem like that. You when, can see in the young part like that. These things? The, yeah. When, when you say stip, stipple, what is it? Is it a flower or a...? No, no, stipple, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of uh, out growth uh, just uh, next to the, 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 the patio base, you know. Okay, yeah. but what does it serve? Is it leaves? Is it? It's, it's a, I think it's a reduction of, of uh, leaf forms. And it's used to, used to be the character of many, many family also. For example, in Ruby AC, you have, uh, you have stipus. Wait, you say, it, I'm still very confused. So it's, it's to do what again, sorry? The, the stipus. Yeah, the, the function is to? The front, the function of this one, I don't really, I don't really know, but uh, maybe, yeah. maybe it's help to protect their the young part when it's still young. The example, young part like, of the stem or the of the of the leaves or yeah. of the shoot, like like yeah. that. You can see. Yeah, you can see that that's yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, like a sheath almost. Like a sheath, it. but it's a reduction. It's a small version of the leaves, but oh. it's a side leaf. It's not yeah. really a. a ordinary leaves yeah yeah so but then when you when you, it's like a much older stem when you go all the way up that's gone because that falls off naturally is that correct in some in some plants yes okay but some plants are uh, we have it permanently uh, stick yeah. to the stem like that yeah and we know bohemias uh, we can identify them because they look like butts <laughs> This is the world's largest species of impatiens, and it's the largest specimen in our garden. Mm. But actually, it's uh, still far from the one that grow in the 
natural habitat in southern part of Thailand. And you see here it's produced a lot of uh, flowers, mm. many different inflorescences. And here, if you want to see the explosive capsule, I can show you here. Oh, right now? Because in in, in their in the greenhouse, there are no pollinators. Yeah. So the rarely fruit set in in the greenhouse, but here uh, outside, it's it's very easy to to get uh, fruit set in to be less than a second. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. If I gently touch here. Yeah. One, two. Oh. See. That is amazing. <laughs> wow. Right. So it needs to be pollinated for the seed to. Right. Right. Explode. Right. And I'm guessing they do that to disperse their seed away from the mother. Right, right. Near the bottom. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's Ooh. See? <laughs> Ooh. It's very startling. It's, it is a nice feeling. This is like a seed. Uh, that, like a, no, that is a wall, capsule wall. Oh, okay. I didn't capture one of the seeds. All right. Like that. Okay. And that. See, it has a white, white seed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like that. And that is an orgasm in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> They're actually very beautiful, yeah. horse ginger. Look like pineapple. Yeah. And this is, this is uh, Etlingera illatio, but yeah. we, we have a second species here. Let me quickly show the close-up first. The, this is the common... This variety. one is pollinated by bird. Ah. Uh, like sunbird. They come and take a nectar. Yeah. This is a, a different species. Hetlingera hemispherica. Tell me about this. How is it? Um, I mean, the flowers are very different. The bright, it's beautiful. Yeah, hemispherica. It means half a circle. You know. Okay. So, so, their the flowers look like like uh, or like a dome, but but half of the half of the dome. Dome. Are you, are you talking about this half? Like right, a dome? right, like like that. Ah, uh, stunning. And let me show you the leaf. Now, quick question for these: Do they like full sun generally? I think fifty percent. Yeah, fifty percent. Yes. Okay. Shit. Interesting. And this is a wolf bynia vera. Mm. Uh, we we use it in many uh, different Thai dishes, mm. and it smells like the cardamom. Uh. Actually, it's a Thai or South uh, or or Southeast Asia cardamom. What part of it do you use for cooking? We use, we use uh, fruit. The fruit. Let me see. Fruit is it's it's hidden. Okay. See white fruit. Yeah. I see it. You see, and if you pick it up, mm -hmm. you scratch it. Mm. Then try to smell. Hmm. Smells actually very good. Yeah. So normally we use fruit, but the young shoot like this is also very nice. It's one of the rare uh, Phanera, or used to call Bohemia. It's yeah. a Phanera uh, lauranta, which is endemic to the southern part of Laos. Mm. Yeah, big red flowers. Is it safe to assume that most of the ginger has some kind of use? Because when we say ginger, I mean, this is really interesting. Yeah, when this, we is say a, this is a hybrid. Uh, ac actually, we we have uh, many different kinds of ginger used in many different dishes of, yeah. of Thailand as as, as uh, spices, and yeah. and then uh, we also are uh, the believeness uh, some kinds of ginger can help to chase away the the goat or devil. Mm. So people grow grow them as their as the garden plant. Yeah, you know. to keep themselves safe. Yes, from unnatural yes. and unseen. Forces. And then some, some, some uh, people uh, believe that if you grow some particular kinds of of ginger, mm. they will bring more money for you. Okay. Yeah. So culturally so, it, and historically, it has strong significance for Thai people. Right. Right. Ginger. And then a lot of them we use for uh, medicinal. Yeah. Or, uses mainly for uh, stomach digestion yeah. yes digestion yeah. 
uh, blood circulation and yeah. other things. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Pia Kasset, for showing us around the garden and sharing your wealth of knowledge. And for those of you guys, please do consider visiting this garden if you're ever in Chiang Mai. And I guess I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye bye. <laughs> I came back to the garden another day and decided to show you a few more plants on my own. Native to South America, Solanum mammosum, or nipple fruit, is considered invasive worldwide. All parts of the plants, including the fruit, is considered toxic. But it's got such interesting leaves and fruit that gardeners worldwide can't resist growing them. Next, we chance upon the Aristolochia gigantea, a true masterpiece of nature. The Aristolochia is a large genus of over 500 known species, and the gigantea is a climbing species found in shaded and humid tropical forests across Central and South America. Their hard-shaped leaves are very easy on the eyes, but everyone would agree that it's their flowers that steal the spotlight. Not only do these flowers resemble rotting meat, within the depths of each flower, a hidden chamber emits an irresistible fragrance reminiscent of decaying matter. Pollinators find themselves trapped for up to three days in the flowers. It is in this intimate encounter that the grand performance of pollination begins. Fortunately, the Aristolochia is a ceremonious host, as it feeds its confused guest delicious nectar in the process. On the second or third day, the flower finally releases the pollinators with fresh pollen on their backs, ready to submit themselves to another delicious trap. The bromeliad greenhouse is a landscaping masterpiece of its own, showcasing hundreds of plants in the bromeliaceae family, including the tillandsia, which is also known as air plants. The water lily greenhouse showcases hundreds of different varieties in full bloom. This is actually a paradise for photographers. I took out my trusted camera and spent a few moments here to capture their beauty. The most impressive greenhouse is a tropical forest. It is not large, but it is thoughtfully landscaped and every corner is a surprising discovery. A towering waterfall provide a picturesque backdrop for this beautiful forest. Zingiber spectabilis inflorescence resembles a beehive or honeycomb, with individual flowers emerging from between the bracts, creating a visually striking appearance. This spectabilis is primarily grown for its ornamental value rather than as a spice. The bracts of the beehive ginger can last for an extended period, providing a long-lasting display in the garden. It is also known for its adaptability to a variety of soil types, provided they are well draining. It also thrives in partial shade to full shade conditions, making it suitable for different garden settings. The Xanthosoma violaceum sports large heart-shaped leaves that exhibit a deep green, rich purple or violet color. It is thought that the pigments responsible for the purple color may provide some level of protection against excess sunlight or UV radiation. Alright folks, I really must bid you farewell this time. If this episode has brought you joy and learning, please do consider clicking like and comment down below. This is so that YouTube knows to recommend this episode to other plant lovers like yourself. Thank you and I will see you all in the next one. Bye bye! Thank you Patreon members for supporting the channel. Should you consider joining as a member, the Patreon link is Sean from Only Plants. It can also be found in this video description. I've started producing bonus contents for members. These include plant hauls, plant shopping, and mini bite-sized adventures. The same bonus contents will also be unlocked for you if you join to become a YouTube member of the channel. There is a monthly membership fee as small as a cup of coffee a month.
Simply go to Only Plants channel page and click join. Your contributions help me grow the channel, do better content, and have a better quality of life. For that, I thank you from the bottom of my heart.